The sighting technique is a way to very precisely measure the proportions of your object and then accurately get those sizes on your piece of paper. So to do this, what I'm gonna use is some type of tool. So I'm just gonna use my pencil that I'm drawing with. And this is gonna be kind of like my ruler. This is what I'm gonna measure it with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the pencil out at arm's length and I'm gonna close one eye so I can measure this. Now the reason I close one eye is so that the, um, my view isn't kind of jumping back and forth between the two different perspectives of each eye. And I'm holding my arm out at arm's length because if I move the pencil closer or farther away, it changes that measurement. So I'm gonna always keep it at my elbow locked so that that measurement doesn't change. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the tip of the pencil on one side, the left side of the object, and I'm going to put my thumb and mark the right side. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring the width of this vase. And so I've got my thumb marked there. So that right now is the width of the vase. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave my thumb there and I'm gonna see how many widths I can fit in the height of this vase. So I'm gonna keep my elbow locked and I can fit one, two, and then just a little portion there. So two and maybe a eighth or two and a fifth or something. So that means the vase is just over two times as tall as it is wide. So what that looks like on my piece of paper and let me move down to my paper. Now, I could have used that same measurement on my piece of paper, but let's say I want to draw larger or smaller than that. So what I can just decide is how big I'm going to make that vase on this piece of paper. So let's say I'm going to uh, I'm going to draw this a little bit larger than life size. So I'm going to say I'm going to make this is going to be the width of my vase. So I just am saying this is how big I'm making it on the piece of paper. It has nothing to do with the measurement that I measured up there. That was just to get the proportions, to get that comparison of the width to the height. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remeasure the width on my piece of paper. So this is how wide I'm making the vase on my paper. So that means it's gonna to have to be two and just a little bit more taller than that. So to make my drawing of the vase proportionate, give it the accurate proportions that I'm viewing in front of me, I have to make it two and just a little over two times taller than is wide. Okay, so then what that lets me do is go ahead and sketch in roughly what this vase is doing. I could go back and I can make more comparisons too. So let's say I wanna see exactly where the front flat vertical edge of this vase ends and then it starts to go more horizontal there at the neck. So I could remeasure the width. So my elbow is locked again. There's the width. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and remeasure. So using the width as my unit, that's one and about a half times from the bottom. So there's one and a half widths from the bottom of the vase until I get to that edge right there. So I can go ahead and use that on my drawing. Okay, so I remeasure the width on my drawing because it's different. And then I'm gonna go one and a half times tall. So there's the front edge of that vase. And then I could go ahead and sketch the rest of that vase in there. Okay, so that's a really rough sketch.
Another way that I can use siding is I can start to get the angles of things. So, for example, if I look at the top of this vase, I noticed that these top edges here, these go back in space away from me, and I can't quite tell what direction that line goes. So what I can use is I can use the pencil and I can hold it up vertically or horizontally next to the object and it can let me help judge and measure the angle of lines. So if I'm looking at this left edge over here and I wanna see what direction it goes, I'm gonna hold my pencil up along the edge and I can actually notice the edge of that tilts towards the right. So it goes from the lower left to the upper right and it goes about that angle there. So what I can use is I can use that angle on my piece of paper. While I've got the camera up here, I'm gonna look at that right edge and I can notice too that that also tilts. I can note it tilts as well, but not quite as much as the left edge. So the right edge tilts to the right too, but not as drastically. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that on my piece of paper then. So, if I look at this right edge, maybe it tilts just a little bit more there. And then actually I'm gonna fix this edge over here and make that tilt as well. Which I think moves this just a little bit. Okay, what the measuring technique is really helpful for is if I have something that goes back away from me into space. So what I have with this book is I have foreshortening happening, which means the depth dimension, which is the top of the book that's going back away from me, that direction into space, it gets shortened down because of the way it's tilted away from me. So if I was looking at the book, like this, of course, the height of the book would be, I could measure it something like this. But because I tilt the book down and it lays flat, notice how the top of that book, the depth dimension, look how much shorter it gets when I lay it down the table. So to get that illusion that it's going back into space, I can measure the width of the book and so I measure it to be that wide. And actually, since I I'm drawing these two objects together, I could go ahead and go back to my vase. Since I already drew the vase, let me measure the width of the vase and compare that to the width of the book. So the width of the book is one and about a half times wider than the vase. Okay, so I'll go ahead and draw that out. Okay, so I remeasure the vase and I said that the book is about one and a half times wider. So that's gonna be the width of my book. Now I'm gonna go ahead and measure the height of the book or the depth dimension of the book. Actually, the part that, the top of the book that goes away from me, the cover of the book. Okay, so I'm gonna use the width of the vase again as my unit and I'm gonna measure the height of the book. So I'm gonna start at the very bottom of the book and the height or depth of the book is really just over about one 
maybe one and a half times. About one and a half times wider than the vase. So if we actually look at the width of the book, it's about equal to the height of the book. In fact, the book is just a little bit wider than it is tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on my drawing. This is a very common mistake that a lot of people make. Your brain knows that the book, if I was to hold it up, we know that the book is taller than it is wide. But when I lay it down on the table, in order to get that illusion that it's going back into space, I have to shorten that height down. Okay, so let me just double check the width of the vase compared to the height of the book. It's just a little bit longer than the width of the, of the vase. Okay, so if I go ahead and sketch my book in here, and again, I can measure the angles of the book. That will also help me get it in perspective. Okay, so if I look at the left and the right edge of the cover of the book there, I'll go ahead and notice their angles. So the right side of the book angles a little bit to the right. So use that pencil to judge that. Okay, and then the left side of the book too, it angles a little bit slightly in the other direction. Okay, so there, is the drawing of the book and the vase together. And they're both the right size compared to each other because I kept measuring them against my unit here, the width of the vase. And the book looked like it's sitting flat on the table and going back into space because of these angles here and because I've shortened down the height of that book so that it is actually longer, it is wider than it is tall on the piece of paper. 